is Min Yang. I am the director of application development for tribology and metrology business in Broker. I I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, bro, uh, bro, uh, Broker uh, uh, metrology webinar. So this uh, webinar is titled as um, Advancement in Optical Profiler Technology from WICO NP to Contour e -Vice. will be presented by Roger Pasusta as broker. Before I introduce Roger, I would like to make a few quick logistic comments. First, we encourage you to uh, participate in the uh, uh, webinar. If you have any questions, pl please type it in the question questions dialog box on your screen. We will um, accumulate all these questions through the presentation, group them together, and answer them at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, quite often, we will have uh, many questions we may not be answer all of them in the session, but afterwards we will uh, follow up, answer the questions through email. Also, I would like you to review the presentation afterwards. Uh, pass uh, to your colleagues we, uh, the uh, webinar material and the link of the recording of the broadcast will send to you via email follow the um, webinar. Finally, when you exit the webinar software, you will be asked to take a brief survey. We would be very appreciated if you could uh, take some time and complete this survey. So that will help us to, um, to improve uh, our future um, webinar. So let's get started. Let me first introduce our presenter. Roger Pasusta, um, who is uh, our uh, marketing application specialist. Uh, Roger has um, over 16 years experience in, uh, in broker, and he has over 30 years experience with metrology uh, specialized in evaluation, qualification, installation, uh, calibration practice, and training. So with this experience, you know, he has a lot of knowledge, and I'm sure he will make a very good presentation. So it's my pleasure to introduce Roger for this webinar. Roger. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. A uh, quick outline today. We will do introductions. We already did the speakers. We'll go through the basics of white light interferometry, a brief history of interferometry at Bruker, and then we'll get into the advancements, hardware and software, a quick slide on current product offerings, and then we'll get into summary and questions. So we were purchased by Bruker, which is a very large company, and right now we're under the Bruker Nano Division, which is gives us access to AFM's X-ray diffraction and other parts of that division. Back in WICO was founded back in 1982, and it was targeted more for the semiconductor data storage industries, and due to its success. Back in 97, Vico purchased WICO and combined us with the AFMs, which used to be digital instruments, the stylus profilometry, better known as DECTEC, uh, tribology, instrumentation, and recently, a couple months ago, uh, we just purchased Hyzotron to add to our tribology product line. As you can see, Bruker Nano has very good worldwide support and access for any uh, worldwide needs. And 
our markets are endless from academia to science, medical. So let's get into just basics of white light interferometry. So we have LED light sources uh, where we focus that light down into a translator. So what we do is we translate the Moreau or Michelson style objective over the sample. We go through focus, we recombine that beam back up through our optical path onto a camera. So here it's in a real live mode. We have light coming from our source. It's divided by the beam splitter into two beams. One beam is reflected from our reference mirror inside the objective, one off the sample. They're recombined constructively and destructively, and that causes a fringe pattern onto our objective. And from that, we can create 3D topographical maps of their surface. So here's a real life example of a scanning in a VSI mode, which we call our vertical scanning instrument. And as the objective and turret scans down, you can see a fringe pattern being formed off the top of our step and the bottom of step. And we recombine that modulation fringe pattern to create a step. Another example, here we have a sphere, same approach. We have light coming down out of the objective. And as that modulation peak forms around the sphere, we can create a topographical map of that sphere. So what we do, we combine all of that technology into a instrument and with that we can build highly accurate topographical map of nearly any surface. So the history of interferometry at Bruker. Here's a uh, long history map but there's a lot of firsts at beginning with WICO, the first phase shifting profiler the first 3D profiler, the first white light profiler for roughness measurements, the first fully automated optical profiler, the first inline production optical profiler, the first self-calibrating profiler, the first profiler for measuring MEMS, 3D characterization, uh, we have a award-winning TTM technology, uh, which we'll discuss later. We have a large NP flex where we can put engine blocks in large surface characterization. Uh, we have award-winning new software technology that we'll get into. And we have a Contour Elite product line which offers newer algorithms and external lighting to uh, better characterize the surface under inspection. So let's get into the meat and potatoes here and the advancements in interferometry. Let's we'll start out with the hardware. Uh, one of the major advancements is the light source. And we'll just go briefly through this chart, and then we have additional slides that to discuss further of what was done with each of the hardware improvements. So in the past, the NT2000 3300s used tungsten halogen lamps. We now use high brightness LED lamps, longer life, better uniform light, and the light output is highly improved. Um, no more running out of light, not getting enough light through the system. We improved the scanner technology itself. 
uh, now we call it an IMOA. We also have an isolated uh, PSI scanner for highly accurate applications. We have newer cameras, lower noise, totally digital. We have high resolution cameras, color, okay, color camera options with that, and smaller pixels, so you're improving lateral resolution um, along with the lower noise measurement. We now offer uh, motorized encoded turrets, um, no more uh, contact indents which is uh, less particle generation, better for uh, clean room compatibility. Uh, we have computers, as you know, that are multi-core. So you can do multitasking, larger stitches. Uh, we offer self-calibration models. So it takes uh, an analysis, a measurement as it goes along, and self Correct. Uh, we have image enhancement uh, on our elite models uh, to give you a higher fidelity images. Uh, we have more objective options, higher magnifications, uh, TTM, which is through transmissive material objectives, along with a self-focusing objectives. We have better environmentally isolated components. Uh, improved electronics uh, for longer lasting low noise and numerous stage options for your part needs. So for light sources, uh, we've done multiple testing, accelerated testing, and in the upper right you can see a chart where we've tested standard LEDs, white LEDs, which is the light blue graph here. We tested what we implemented, our high flux LED compared to incandescent lamps. So along the bottom is time and hours, and we started everything at 100% light output. Typically, with the LEDs now for VSI, you're running less than 5% output. But this was maxing everything out and seeing how long it was last. And for a 3300, the bulb lasted maybe 100 hours for an 8,000 type system, uh, maybe 750 hours. Uh, the LED went on for years, and uh, for the cutoff on this test, was still outputting. Uh, the bottom graph shows stability of the light. So on the top chart, you can see an incandescent lamp has large major fluctuations along with short-term fluctuations. LED, fairly constant. So you're getting better repeatability, better measurements, and much higher output life. The head itself, the scanner, um, we just went through the LED improvements. More light, more stable, improved uniformity. This helps with also better fringes so you can get more data off of the surface. We now have high resolution cameras and color camera options depending on your measurement needs. Um, the head itself has improved rigidity. So again, uh, reducing any noise in the system uh, for better measurements. Uh, the heads now are um, lead screw driven in any orientation. So if you had a special application where the head needed to be mounted upside down, uh, they can be done that. Uh, longer scan range, we're up to 10 millimeters. Uh, less particular generations now for clean room environments. And using the green light output, it actually is better for semi-transparent materials, so you're not seeing through the top of the surface. Um, so you get better, less height variation. 
by going to the green LEDs, which are in there now. Uh, the way it's designed, we have less Abbey offset error between the lead screw and the measurement objective. And we have high speed autofocus as standard on all the systems now, where in the past we use point detectors. And so it's much more reliable. You can move the autofocus to anywhere on the part to get a good autofocus. Along with that head design, we have an option for very high end, very low noise measurement gauge and reproducibility. On the bottom, you can see in nanometers a three day GRNR that was performed on some parts where we're getting a sub angstrom type repeatability over three days. We have high resolution camera options. So on the left, you can see a standard camera at 50x, and on the right is a high resolution camera. So the pixels are smaller, so your lateral resolution is improved. And along with that, it's a larger CCD uh, camera array. So you can actually go to a higher magnification and still field, get a better bigger field of view of what you're inspecting. So we have uh, self-calibration models now. So what we have is a Heaney laser designed within the head itself that bounces off our scanner mechanism and that returns back onto uh, detectors where we can create a lysogel, basically like a stage encoder. So we're constantly monitoring the scanner, the movement, and we make minor corrections as we're taking the measurements. And it's an absolute uh, second level traceable standard. Uh, we still recommend for ISO traceability, you can run uh, certified step standards, um, but there's no need anymore to put the step value in and perform the calibration, because that's all done uh, internal to the system. Here's an example of where we purposely change the temperature in our testing lab by uh, 10 degrees Celsius just to get everything to thermally expand. And the top chart shows what the measurement was without the continuous calibration. And the bottom chart shows with continuous calibration. So it compensated as the uh, temperature and everything was thermally expanding. We used a zero dir standard, so we knew that wasn't expanding. So, and so we got a about a 5x stability improvement in this test. Our uh, Contour Elite product has additional external lighting, which you can see on the bottom left when you're trying to find the surface or measurement with it off. Uh, it's hard to see this low contrast surface with it on, makes it easier to see. And along with that, we have color camera option on the right that we can overlay on top of the Z height 3D measurement. And we have this newer display algorithms to help you display that data once it's captured. Our objectives now are more uh, thermally stable compared to the past objectives. And here's a test on bottom where yellow was the temperature. Once again, we uh, purposely shifted the temperature in the lab by three degrees. Um, on a 50X, this is an old style 3300 objective in pink. 
and you can see the RA we were measuring off of a stable LTEC surface started to drift with the temperature. Our newer objectives now are athermal or thermally more stable where it doesn't affect the focus of it as much. And of course, we're talking sub-nanometer type changes, but some applications require this type of stability. And these new objectives automatically come with that type of stability. We now have options for our higher magnification objectives. Um, on the upper right here, you can see a self-focusing objective alignment where on the bottom left chart, again, in our test lab, we're changing the environment, monitoring the RA within the lab, and we shifted the temperature quite a bit to try and get the objective to go out of focus. What this does is we can set up a routine where the objective automatically runs to a part standard or artifact on the stage, takes an RA reading, and it monitors its focus. Here where we change temperature quite a bit, it could see it was falling out of adjustment. Once it reached that threshold, it automatically adjusted itself back to be within focus and went on again making production measurements and periodically going back and measuring its focus on the artifact. We now have multiple additional type objectives for various applications. So in this case, here's 115x objective. So we can go up to 230 uh, X magnification with a 2X FOV. Uh, in the past, this wasn't even feasible because of we couldn't get enough light through the system. Now with the new LEDs, uh, having enough light is not a problem or an issue. Uh, so it, this objective, the 115X also gives us, since it has a high NA, our slopes, depending on the roughness of the surface being measurement, but it gets us closer to the 90 degree slopes that are sometimes needed to be measured. On the upper right, we have bore scopes and turning mirrors. Bore scopes are great for uh, cylinder sleeves getting inside, measuring the surface roughness of the sides. Um, we can mount a turning mirror. You can see the little the light circled in red there bouncing off the side of a part. So not, now you don't have to turn the part uh, vertically to try and measure inside. We turn the light bouncing off the side of the part to get a surface finish measurement. And down below we have our TTM objective or through transmissive material objective. Um, they were initially developed for environmental chambers. So there's a piece of glass inside here. We're either heating the part, humidity, or whatever we're subjecting the part to. Uh, we put a compensation glass in the objective. So the signal coming out and off of the part is the same optical difference coming through the objective and we're able to measure into the environment and chamber. Our casting has been improved, especially on our larger systems. So we got a lower mass for improved performance um, all around, improved vibration isolation for production floors, greater tip-tilt ranges, for our head designs. Uh, the casting itself, again, is reduce weight, improve ESD dissipation, and better vibration characteristics. We have now rotary stage options. So on the left, 
is what we call our hot dog rover. These can be mounted on any of our present contour tools. And the part is right here. So if it's a cylindrical part that can be put on these two little rollers, uh, you can do rotational measurements around the part, or you can actually stitch around the part. On the right, we have our three dot jaw chuck that mounts on our NP Flex, our larger tool systems. Uh, once again, cylindrical parts. Uh, we can automatically spec around the part. Uh, the bottom one has our turning mirror on it, and we're doing internal inspection on this bearing ratio there. So those were our hardware, major hardware improvements here, some of the software improvements. Uh, right now, we went from, we're utilizing the 64-bit uh, of our computer designs. The past software on our NT systems were 32-bit. So this improves more powerful, a lot faster processing. Along with that, we have multi-tasking analysis where we can uh, do multiple analysis on a image. Uh, we briefly discussed the enhanced imaging, external lighting, color cameras. We have a couple new measurement modes, VXI mode, that uh, kind of combines our phase shifting, our smooth PSI mode with vertical scanning mode. We have acuity for improved lateral resolution. We have live acquisition where we can see the data being captured as you're taking a measurement. We have a quick measure mode for ease of use for our less experienced operators. We now have a thin film measurement that allows us to get below uh, that two micron kind of limit from our thick film software. If you have a color camera, we can have color-based segmentation to uh, separate the data. We have Cognex pattern matching within the software for alignment or centering of parts before measurement. Fully uh, integrated autofocus, auto intensity, and auto tip tilt. Um, for production or just general measurement. We have more options for stitching images, put multiple images together for a larger field of view. Uh, we have more X, Y, and Z stage automation. And we added our Vision 64 map software, another analysis package within Vision 64. So on the left, you can see our Vision 32. Um, if you're running the older NT systems, that's what you're used to seeing. As you can see, the same image ran through our Vision 64 on the right. You can see our palette range is much larger. We have much more display options to uh, better present the data. And along the bottom, uh, you can see with Vision 64, you can have a preview of what the data is, not only in Windows Explorer, but actually what you have open in the Active Gallery. So it makes it easier not to have to remember the file name. You can just take a see the picture of what the file is and the image you want to analyze. Right now, with one image, this is the same image. We can do 2D analysis at the same time as doing a 3D analysis. You can create trees so we can do S parameters. Look at the basic RA stats. You can do multi-region, sure vision. You can do this all in parallel. And instead of in the past having to rerun the image to get maybe a different analysis, uh, you do it all at once. You build the tree up and then what's ever in the tree can then be logged into the database. So you can see we just did a generic um, multi-region on the Bruker logo on the bottom while we were doing all the other analysis. 
So it's very useful in uh, doing multi-analysis on one image. And once again, you save the recipe for this part or that analysis, and you have it for future. This is a part of our new enhanced imaging display. So on the left, you see three images of what the standard display used to look like. These are some via holes, um, some surface metal, and this is actually a peak sphere. On the right, we turned on our enhanced lighting, which actually uses the intensity of the light overlaid on the 3D map. And what's impressive, you can see the milling marks on this peak material, where in the past you wouldn't be able to see that when you were displaying your 3D map. Uh, so it's better data representation and display. We have improved cameras. So if you need true color, here is the height map of a circuit board. Now we can do a 3D color option of that, and we can do a 3D monochrome of that same image. We have a couple new measurement modes. So here is VXI mode, which for in the past, very smooth surfaces, we've used phase shifting. Uh, VXI kind of combines phase shifting with our vertical scanning mode, so it gives you uh, low noise, high accuracy with a large ski Z measurement range. On the right is uh, Acuity XR. Uh, you can see on the left we're measuring some line widths with it off, and with it turned on you're actually improving your lateral resolution uh, where it does sub-pixel analysis on the image to improve that lateral resolution. Uh, this is a feature I really like. So you can actually watch the 3D being built up. So here is a, uh, a wear mark off of a uh, coin. So if I play this, you can actually watch the 3D being built up as the fringes come through focus. So you know right away before you even see the final result if you're going to have a good measurement or not. We have a uh, quick measurement. Um, so for the last experience, person running the tool, you do a Z focus to the top of your surface, get fringes on the top, set the top, you focus down, you press set the bottom, you press measure. It will automatically set up all your measurement parameters and take a measurement for you. Our new thin film code now gets us down below that two micron barrier. On the bottom you can see a film where we had surfaces measuring or variation from about 200 nanometers up to two microns. And it's able to measure these type surfaces. Here's the color segmentation feature where if you have the color camera option, um, before you'd segment off of heights, well, this is actually segmenting off of color. So you can separate the data out, and you can see that in C here. That was uh, separated by color and not height. We have real-time autoing. So we have autofocus options, auto intensity option, which you can see here. Red means there's a little too much light. Um, by turning on auto, it automatically adjusts the light level. So no need to do this light bar. And we have auto tip tilt. So if you have a model that has tip tilt in the head, 
it will automatically adjust the tip tilt for you. Uh, depending on, you can tell it's on all the fringes, or if you want three fringes, it will automatically adjust it and then take the measurement for you afterwards. Um, we have Cognex pattern matching. So you can automatically use it to, if you're doing production runs, you can put the part on. It can drive to your fiducial setup in your automation, find a fiducial, align to it, and correct for any deviations by putting that part on and off of your stage. It can also be used for if you want to center a part directly in the center of the field of view before the measurement, we can do an auto position adjustment with the Cognex pattern matching. We have more stitching functions. Uh, we have the traditional rectangular stitch. Uh, we now have rectangular annulus stitch which is basically if you wanted to do the outside of some kind of enclosure but there's no data needed in the middle, you just tell it what the center uh, width is you want to skip and not even measure there. We have cylindrical stitching for our rotational stages that we show later. Uh, we have circular stitching uh, for around for our XY stages. We have circular annulus, again, like stitching a washer where there's a hole in the center. No need to waste the time to stitch in the center where there's no data. And we have user defined where you can go into the XY uh, stage automation, create a pattern of any type and any shape, and import that into stitching, and it'll stitch along a unique shape. Uh, that you need. And lastly, along with that, we have various new um, stitching options that allow you to stitch at different resolutions, um, different data. If you have roughness, it'll just look at the flat data and improve this overall stitching. And along with the improved computers, uh, Here's a stitch where we did over 2,000 images. Uh, high resolution, larger stitches uh, that we weren't able to do in the past just because we were computer and memory limited. We have more automation options. So we have XY and multi-grid uh, options for stage automation. We're putting parts on, saving the recipe, and automatically measuring again. We have wafer grid automations of various types. We have XY scatter, where you user defined where you want to measure. And we have for the rotational stages um, for going around and doing inspections around the part. And again, all of these can be used with pattern matching uh, for automatic alignment and ease of use. We can also now program our Z axis. So if you have large Z changes in your part, we can tell it at this location we want to move our Z axis up to a certain location so we don't have to have these huge scan ranges to make the measurement. So here's an example at location one. It takes our measurement of the surface, moves our scanner up, takes another measurement, moves our scanner to the third position and takes the measurement. So it's improved performance and speed. We have now a vision map, which is we combine with uh, Digisurf for uh, added analyses, um, which enhance the uh, current analyses we have on the system. So MOSFETs is one of the big ones where we can do various surface analysis 
Um, one that's been very popular is GD and T analysis, where we can take a 2D contour out of a part. Here's a dental bit where we take pull out a 2D contour, compare it to the print on the bottom, and we can show old deviations. So along with measuring the surface finish of this part, we're also doing a GD and T analysis of how well it conformed to the print. Uh, lastly here, we'll do one slide on some of the new products, uh, do a summary and any questions that we have. So in a nutshell, what do these improvements mean? On the left you can see a 3300 where we have about 41 percent valid pixels on this semi-rough sphere. On the new contour models, we 50 percent improvement on the data coming off of this measurement sphere. So right now we have, this is our general offering. We have a contour K, which is a desktop style. You can get it with air isolation seat. Uh, tip tilt in the stage. We have a contour eye. We remove the tip tilt in the head. Um, the improvement there is when you tip tilt in the head, the part isn't moving laterally, so it's more ease of use. And then we have our contour X, which has our self calibration, larger stages, faster scan speed. And we have our NP Flex, which is our large 12 by 12 volume opening. We can actually put extensions on that if we need to raise that up even higher. If you need to get something larger within that volume for measurements. So the Bruker Contour, we have now enhanced software uh, providing software options we haven't had in the past. We have improved overall imaging and image displaying, improved hardware, um, long-lasting support uh, as parts become obsolete on the older tools, and with improvement in electronics, it's a lower noise, better measurement, and all around it's a faster improved throughput with improved reproducibility and reliability. Here's our contact information uh, of myself and Min here in the room. Uh, we have an optical profiler website, uh, optical profiler service support email, and for general product information. Uh, right now we're going to Open this up to questions that anybody has. Um, one question we had was, can we put the Vision 64 on our older 32-bit type, say an NT3300? Uh, the problem there is driver support. Uh, we can't get the NT, or some of those older ones are even NT software. So to get the drivers for the newer components, um, typically we can't, but a lot of that, you know, we'll run that through our service department and see what we can support. But technically it becomes very difficult to try and get our new software to work on anything older our older NT tools. It's almost impossible. Um, that's um, oh, that's a good question. Can you still use the analysis software on more than one computer? Uh, yes. Uh, I, 
I believe now if with a purchase of a newer system uh, you get all the offline Vision 64 software needed to support that tool. Uh, no more. I think in the past uh, they sold software licenses for the Vision 32 software, but uh, no, all the uh, software support and offline is uh, is included with the system. Thank you, Roger. And we give a few more minutes for any more questions. Okay, if there's no more questions, then I would like to thank you to attend this webinar. And after this webinar, you will get a link with the, this, uh, um, this presentation and also the uh, presentation material. We want to uh, 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 remind you that after this webinar, you will get a brief survey. We would like to get um, your input on how we can improve our, our webinar. Thank you again for your attendance. We hope to see you next time. Thank you, Roger, for the nice uh, presentation. So that we will conclude this uh, webinar. Thank you. <laughs>